Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for the invite, Olivia. Delighted to be here. I enjoyed the presentations. I can see how, how we fit in with, with the bigger picture. Um, so, yeah, I'm here from, from Mulrani and County Mayo, and uh, I just want to give you a, a quick, I suppose, tour of what we're doing in Mulrani in terms of ecotourism. Um, and I suppose, as, as the other speakers have said, you know, it's about chief in, in there is conservation uh, collaboration and I suppose we, we started out on, on this road with uh, caring for the coastline. So Mulrani uh, is located on the north side of Clue Bay and we have, we have three special conservation areas around us. All of those are EU designated landscapes and we're on the Great Western Greenway and we're on the Wild Atlantic Way. We have a, we have a stunning uh, landscape in landscape and seascape in Morani, and you can see it here embedded in this beautiful area. And this is the Nathan Mountain Range to the north of Morani. This is Balakoy National Park to the north of Morani. This is uh, Coron Peninsula and Ackill. Uh, the view from Morani, Crow Patrick there in the distance. Um, Mulrani Salt Marsh. Uh, our Mac hair system there with uh, hares and uh, otters. Um, Mulrani, uh, 100 years ago, and certainly Achill, was, you could have described it as a, as a third world country. It was very, very poor. And tourism uh, was seen as one of the means of developing it. And the, the, the Achill railway line was developed in the late 1890s. Beautiful infrastructure. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, railway station house in Mulrani and the Mulrani Hotel. And this had electric light 50 years before rural electrification in Mulrani. Uh, walks were developed, this is the uh, Victorian Causeway, and you could say that Morani had it all in terms of tourism at that time. Uh, unfortunately, the railway line closed in 1937, it was pilfered, you know, just got kind of broken up into pieces. Uh, the old railway house unfortunately fell into decline and dereliction, and the causeway eventually became, it fell into poor repair. The hotel uh, fell into uh, dereliction, and you know it's, a, it's kind of just a sad tale of, um, I suppose, I don't know, bad planning. Just a whole list of reasons why that happened. But this is a low, a low point you could say in Morani's history in 2003. Uh, we have, we had, and we still have a beautiful coastline. And at that time, uh, we our coastline was severely eroded, and that was recognised by uh, state agencies. You can see severely eroded there, and you can see the, the shore has, is, is moving in there. The whole sort of dune system has been broken down. And this was an initiative in uh, late 1998. We, we essentially attempted to destock the entire four dune there, and we erected 3,500 metres of fencing. And most of it was gone actually within a few days. You can see here we, our timing just wasn't good. Uh, there, was, there was a fence running here, but it, it disappeared. But we, we went back to it again and uh, we, we, we got it uh, up and running again. And you can see, I suppose, even when the dune starts to recover, a lot of maintenance here because the, the fence has to be kind of risen up. And that was essentially to destock it completely and allow the dune to regenerate. So what you had then was, you know, five or six years later, the, the dune recovered. Uh, and this is just another area. You had tidal breaches through the, through the peninsula there started to, to, to put bushes and, and help the dune along. Um, just some images there to show you that you know, it wasn't, wasn't easy to maintain this, but um, eventually we, we managed to get that sort of dune system back in fully intact. And that, that's a nice healthy dune system there with the drift line and so on in the front. Uh, this is a sort of a 10 year window, if you like. Um, you can see the area there. Some years later, the dune starting to build up. This is birds for trefoil, by the way, which is a pioneering flower species. And then you had ground nesting uh, occurring there 10 years later, which was very satisfying, obviously. Uh, one of the, in we, I suppose, by doing this project, we learned a lot about the ecosystem. And this is the belted beauty moth, which only exists in, in pristine macares in counties, counties Mayo and Galway. The female is wingless. The, the larvae burrow into the soft sand and they feed on birds with trefoil. So this species relies on sand movement. It relies on erosion and deposition to create the habitat for it. And when you understand the ecology of, of the dune, you, you can better manage it. We also learned, for example, that the drift line 
is, is uh, may, you may think of it as a benign feature on the beach, but it's the seedbed of the next dune system that helps to protect the dune for, for the following winter. So I suppose over 10 years we became very familiar with the ecology of the dune and we started to do some interpretation work and uh, yeah, you can see it there on uh, Morani Blue Flag Beach. I suppose meanwhile, uh, fortunately, um, the hotel was completely restored. This was a sort of a miracle essentially. Um, but the communities, I suppose, having seen what had happened in the past, said, look, we need to work to make sure we don't lose this tourism again. And they started to develop uh, loop walks, and it was just very simple stuff, gates and styles, and repairing old cultural, cultural uh, features and um, fixing uh, culverts and bog roads, repairing the, the, the causeway. And the Bowery loop walks were launched in uh, 2007, and here's Morani here, and this is Newport. Um, and you can see a network of walks there. What I suppose what happened was, what emerged out of that was that the old railway line was redeveloped. Um, because landowners had got uh, interested in the trails that had been approached on it, there was an opportunity there. And the old railway line, as I'm sure many of you know, was redeveloped into the Great Western Greenway. And that has been a phenomenal success story from a tourism point of view, I think worth six or seven million to the local economy. And that was lying idle for 70 years. And I suppose one of the th points I would make is that a lot of our discarded heritage is there and we, you know, we should look at it and try and reuse it. And that, that's the moral of the story from this project. Uh, as a community, we, um, we, didn't, we, 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 we felt we needed to mobilise our community. And we went through a community futures process, which is a community development model. And we adopted this mission here, which you could say is very much a sustainable tourism mi mission. It's about making our place better for us and for people to visit. Um, I suppose one of the Morani's strengths at that time would have been care of the elderly, and we identified ecotourism and environmental management as areas that we, we should focus on. And during, the, during the, those five years, creativity, art and cultural assets kind of came out uh, over time. And I think in our next plan, which we'll be, we're working on at the moment, youth involvement and high nature value farming and food are going to be themes in there. And you can see, as someone mentioned earlier, it's people and landscape, and those are key assets. So the process uh, created a number of community groups in the area. The Morani Community Futures becoming a coordinating group. <coughs> and over the five years, an another set of groups have emerged, and they all had a green hue to them, very much environmental and, and social enterprise. One of the things that we did was we, this was our original loop walk, and it wasn't that great. It was on a, on a main road here and main road here. And we, we, we took that off road and we took it up here onto the hills. And, and um, that gave you access to beautiful scenes like this. And this was essentially local landowners signed up to allow this to happen, and that was key. And this is, this is what communities are good at, is getting this kind of cooperation happening on the ground. And you can see there that people get to enjoy this fantastic scenery uh, in, in Mulrani. We also, the walk actually gets into an area here that uh, the old Irish goat is, uh, is located in, and they're, they're a big attraction. We had our first walking event in 2010, and that was radical, totally new for us. We couldn't do it before. And so walking tourism has, has developed in Mulrani. And a lot of the research that we've done on the coast feeds into this, this tourism. We're able to inform people about the coast and the ecology, and, and they get a lot more out of it because of that. Uh, there was a tourism group formed, and they took a derelict building there and renovated it for €3,000, and that is a major tourism information point for us. And it's really important. It's frontline. Visitors get to meet with local people and find out about what's going on in the area. Our timing was very good on this because the European Destination of Excellence Awards were the theme that year that the tourism group was set up was restored heritage. But you also needed uh, biodiversity and other credentials and we were able to package what was going on in Morani around the Great Western Greenway to put that forward and we succeeded in winning that. And still, still today now we're benefiting from that. This, this kind of promotional stuff has been produced and it's, it's excellent because it's based on collaboration. And of course, there was a lot of um, uh, publicity for that. 
this is uh, Ray Werner talking about a local <coughs> bit of, uh, of Mulrani heritage and myself uh, talking to Ella McSweeney on, about the contents of that trailer, <laughs> and, uh, which, I, which I borrowed actually. The trailer got more commentary <laughs> than, than, the, than the contents. Uh, but this is what it's all about. It's about employment and, you know, I always think about a lot of these people are, are putting, you know, children through education, a lot of them going through education and that's, that's what it's all about and, you know, it's opportunities. Um, we had a big problem in Morani. We had Great Western Greenway, we had trails, but you couldn't walk safely in the village. And you had this kind of horrendous um, experience, if you like, for tourists and residents. And, you know, our school children walking on the side of the road, and this is just terrible stuff, you know. And it kind of, you know, there's a lot of reasons why, why this happened, but we uh, worked with the Heritage Council to help us draw up a vision for Morani through a village design statement. And it presented this vision of Morani as a pedestrian-friendly place. And that was key in terms of getting people on board. And, you know, I think this is where the deal was actually made in terms of getting it done. <laughs> And it, and it has happened, and that was launched, I think, three years ago. And uh, you have a beautiful promenade in Morani now, and these spaces here were created for pedestrians. And it's about putting, you know, putting the pedestrian first in our, in our public spaces, and that was a radical change that has happened in Morani. One of the other things that came out of, it, our, of Community Futures was social enterprise. These ladies started to take uh, waste material from Fox or Woolen Mills, to make product to sell to feed into our community and environmental projects. And since then, a whole lot of other groups have sprung up <laughs> whereby, <laughs> whereby all of the, all of the waste from Foxwood Woolen Mills is now getting completely reused. And this is a kind of her local heritage inspired craft, which is a key. And I suppose this is what it's all about here, people giving their time to their community and back to the, to the county and country. Um, just you can see here, you know, starting out with the raw wool, a lot just, just in terms of the puppets, just wanted to show you that. And like, they're just, they're just beautiful creations. And as someone said, the Americans just love these, you know, you can't actually create enough of them. And just more, just to, you know, the whole creativity thing has really emerged over the last few years. And it's, I've been really sort of awakened to it. And it's very important. It gets more people involved and that's very important. And this is a, a group from America getting involved in that. And there's the uh, mosaic going up on the environmental centre. This is something that we've opened this year. Uh, it's a strategic a project for us. Uh, you know, it's running on a shoestring budget. It's about creating a place where we can operate out of. Uh, you can learn about the macker there. And uh, also it's an outlet for gift of hands and other local craft outlets. So, you know, it's, it's small, but it's, it's, it's helping the local economy. So, just, uh, I think I'm getting, um, I'm getting through it okay. So the question there, what's as old as Paul number one, but not protected or recognized in Ireland, as part of our cultural heritage? And it's this fellow here, which is the old Irish goat. This is 5,000 years of history here in Four Legs, but it's not officially recognised in Ireland or protected under legislation. And the problem is that it's essentially disappearing and it's essentially invisible uh, to official Ireland as it were. So the problem is that unlike buildings, you can't see the, the degeneration of the Old Irish Goat. The Old Irish Goat, there was half a million of them in Ireland in the 19. 20s, they were discarded, if you like, to, to the hills, and they've been replaced by modern breeds. But the modern breeds are also been discarded, and there's a cross-breeding issue happening here. So these are the modern breeds. You have your British Alpine here, and your, your Swiss Tockenberg. And this is a kind of a mix, mixed version of them. You have your British Tockenberg cross there with the old Irish goat, long coat. And this gives you uh, an insight into it. This is a very a beautiful old Irish goat female. And this is an offspring which has a different conformation, a taller goat, longer ears, and Swiss, Swiss um, markings. And this is another example then. Beautiful old Irish goat. And this little fella here, beautiful goat, but he has Swiss markings and he has larger ears. So this is the genetic degeneration, if you like, of the old Irish goat that's happening. And this is a mix here. 
you see the larger Swiss breeding coming through here, a nice little uh, old large goat female, Swiss Tockenberg, uh, Swiss markings here as well. So we're losing our, our heritage there. This is the end result is a sort of a nondescript crossbred on the hills. So as I, I call that the, the King Puck paradox because you know we celebrate the King Puck part of our heritage, but we're not looking after it. So what we're doing in Morani is we, we have this breeding program, and you can see these goats here. Okay, I'm on time actually now, so I'm just going to get through this quickly. We've started to breed um, some of these as, as an interim measure to try and save them, get familiar with them, and learn how to do that. And you can see these are just a beautiful uh, animal and you know, part, of our, part of our heritage and history. We've introduced them to people in the Failing Tua, got great response trying to get you know, awareness at, at, at a young age, which you've talked about here as well. And we've also done a DNA study on these. This is an old Irish goat in the Dublin Natural Museum. We've taken DNA from him to compare it to modern goats in Morani and from other old breeds across, across England and Ireland. So that's a big project that's ongoing, but it's about, uh, to bring it back to tourism, we, we had a week, Heritage Week event and it was wonderful. The kids really enjoyed it. And the two families that were there that came to us that day, they, they booked a holiday in Morani next year from that. So this, this is a tourism hook and it can work. Another aspect is our dry stone walls. This is training and inviting people to Morani to help us conserve our heritage. That's, that's what ecotourism is, is about for us in Morani. And it's about hard work and people enjoy it, do you know? So, uh, just one other initiative, Green Plan, connected in with Dublin Fire, Fire, Firefighter Neil McCabe. You know, we're, we're using rhododendron cut down to, to fuel the tourist office there, just <coughs> one initiative. And we're also working with geodesign and other methods of planning. And this is about communities, you know, leading the planning process. That's, and that's what we're, we're interested in trying to do. This is a very interesting model. I can't get into it now, but it's very sophisticated and, and very useful. Just to get back to the coast, as you know, the storms last year, huge amount of debris, uh, massive effort made to keep the coast clean, uh, and we're also continuing with research because that feeds into our, into our tourism. Very proud of this initiative. Uh, this year we've developed this uh, interpretation of our coastline, and you can see a bit of that out, out in the foyer there. So we've been recognised, I suppose, if you think about where we were in 2003, last year or a couple of years ago we won the tourism tight towns and here with the Responsible Tourism got a silver award last year. So that's a big change around from where we were at and Green Plan. So that's the team uh, in the environmental group. There's obviously other groups involved as well. Acknowledgements there, just very quickly, huge amount of states, agencies involved. And I'm just going to leave you with that for more information. But what I would say, just in response to Owen, in terms of the state needing help, we need help as well. And we'd love for the Department of Environment and Fault Ireland to help us save the old Irish boat because that needs collaboration. So thank you.